The other day I was attending one of those family Indian parties that you don't really want to go to, but you kind of have to go to. I was sitting at the table, minding my own business. If you looked at me, it would have seemed like I was just scrolling on my phone. But if you looked a little closer, you would notice I was actually reading a Kindle book on an e-reader disguised as a phone. Today, I'm gonna to show you a device that is not a Kindle, but can still read all your Kindle books and do a whole lot more. It's called the Onyx Books Palma. Now, to be candid with you, I am a huge fan of the Kindle and the ecosystem. Yeah, there are definitely some shortcomings when using a Kindle, but I think in the overall book tech space, the Kindle has a great experience for reading. So my entire review of the Palma is gonna be comparing to the Kindle. Bias is very much Intended. Now, the first thing you need to know is how weird of a device the Onyx Books Palma actually is. This thing costs a whopping 279 US dollars, which is comparable to the Kindle Scribe and almost double the price of the Kindle Paperwhite. Now, to be clear, this device is not actually a phone. It is an e-reader with a six inch screen, the size of a phone. And you're probably wondering, why is this device so expensive? The answer to that question lies underneath the hood of the phone. This thing is fully specced out. It has an octa-core processor and six gigabytes of RAM, which is insanely overkill for an e-reader. On top of that, we also have 128 gigabytes of internal storage, as well as the ability to expand that storage with an SD card slot. And they also even included a camera on the back of the device. Look, I've got to say the Palma is one of the fastest e-readers I've ever used, but having this much hardware in the device at this level makes no sense for an e-reader. I really think it would be much more appealing if they cut all of that basically in half, got rid of the camera, got rid of all that storage that will never be used for people reading books. If they just really lowered the bar a little bit, they could have gotten the price down and made this device way more accessible for more people. Another thing that is worth mentioning is Onyx as a whole is a company based out of China. So if you live here in America, getting a device from them is not as easy as getting something off of Amazon Prime. They do actually have an Amazon store, but not all of their products are available and their inventory does fluctuate depending when you're buying it. Next, I want to talk to you about the unique reading experience of the Palma. And before we really dive deep into that, regardless of whether you're reading a Palma or on a Kindle, what really matters is the fact that you're reading books. And I want to make sure that always remains the focus. If you're looking for some accountability to improve your reading habit and want to read some fun nonfiction books with me and a thousand other people from around the world, I actually have my own book club called Presently Reading. It's a really fun, wholesome experience. Every month I choose a new book and we read it together over the course of the month. And then I have discussion questions throughout the month. It's a really fun time. I really encourage you to join if you wanna read more, link down below for that. Now putting aside the form factor of the Palma, another thing that's very unique about it is the fact that it's running an Android operating system. If you've ever used a Kindle before, you know it runs its own Kindle software, but on the Palma, you have Android, which means you can download any app you want from the Google Play Store. Now, if you ask me, I think the ability to download apps from the Google Play Store is both a blessing and a curse. The good part of that is I can download the Kindle app, but I could also download the Kobo app. I can download any app and read books from a whole variety of sources. The downside though, is I'm also gonna be tempted to get very distracted on my e-reader. I love having e-readers that are just focused on one thing, which is reading books. I don't wanna get bogged down by having all these other apps that might tempt me to do other things. On my Pama, I downloaded only two apps to make sure I don't get distracted. The first app was the Kindle app, and the other app was the Readwise Reader app. Now, full disclaimer, this video was made in collaboration with the Readwise team. They actually were kind enough to send me a whole bunch of Onyx Books devices so I can check them out and also use their Reader app on them to see how they perform. Now, I already have a whole video talking about the Readwise Reader app, and I do plan on making more videos about that app. But in a nutshell, I really do think it's one of the best reading apps available in the book tech space right now. It offers a ton of functionality. You can do things like subscribe to newsletters, RSS feeds, you can save articles to read later. You can even do things like put EPUBs into your library and read them directly in the app. It's a very versatile app. Now, even though the reader app is not optimized or specifically designed for any e-ink e-reader, I have to say my experience with it so far on my Pama has been incredible. It works really well. Since the Pama is such an overkill 
device in terms of the specs. You can open up the Reader app or any app for that matter and pretty much guarantee to have a very nice and fast experience. The Reader app especially worked really well for me. I can scroll through articles, go between all the different settings and tabs, and I had no major issues whatsoever. The only annoyance I had was the fact that the highlights are yellow on the Reader app, which doesn't really show up too well on the Onyx Palma because it's a black and white screen. To be fair, I had the same exact issue in the Kindle app until I made the highlight color a bit darker. You can't currently do that in the Reader app, but I've been told that future optimizations are gonna be coming for the e-reader experience of the Reader app. So I have no doubt that this app will only get better with time. Speaking of the Kindle app, the way this app works on the Palma is the same as you would use on any Android phone. You are downloading the same Android Kindle app on the Palma that you would on any other Google Play supported device. Now again, this Kindle app from the Google Play Store is not meant to be used on e-ink. They have their own Kindle lineup, which is meant for e-ink, but even though it's not optimized for e-ink, it does work very well from my experience. Once you go through and fiddle with some of the settings, you can turn off things like the page turn animations, adjust the size and margins to your liking, and it works really well. With all that being said, I do think there's one major issue with the Kindle app that really, really annoys me whenever I read on it on my Palma, and that is accidental swiping. Because the Palma is in the shape of a phone and the Kindle app is very sensitive to where you swipe on the screen, I just find myself swiping in the wrong place way too often. For example, if you swipe anywhere in the middle of the screen, you're gonna open up the Kindle book menu, which is something I'm doing all the time by mistake. Also, there have been other times where I'm swiping to turn the page and somehow I swiped in the wrong place and the whole app just closes out or something like that because there's also shortcuts built into the Palma software Software that will close the app out and bring you back to the home screen that sometimes conflict with the Kindle app. All of this just gets really confusing and if it's the first time you're using it, you really gotta sit down and make sure you figure out what you're doing. When it comes to highlighting, I find myself struggling a bit more than I normally would with a regular Kindle e-reader. I have to really be precise with where I'm highlighting on the screen. And because the device is so fast, if I have to swipe and highlight between pages, I often end up changing too many pages instead of just one, which is a very unique problem I never thought I'd have. All right, to wrap things up over here, probably wondering, is the Palma worth it? Is this phone form factor any good? Is having Android on an e-reader worth it? And here are my final thoughts. I feel that the Palma is a very unique e-reader, but I don't think I would want this as my primary e-reader of choice. It just feels a bit too similar to my phone. It has a 6.13 inch display with 300 PPI resolution. So the resolution and the crispiness of the text is perfectly fine. It compares just the same as my Kindle. On top of that, it has USB-C, it's water resistant, it has volume buttons. It even has a programmable function button, which I've used to adjust the warm light. So it has all the main features you'd want for an e-reader. As a bonus, this device has a camera, like I mentioned before, which I've never used and don't plan on using. It also has built-in speakers, which is something that I imagine people might use for audiobooks. I don't like the back of the device. It has this weird textured feeling to it. It kind of makes it feel a bit cheaper and lower quality than it could have been. But again, the device as a whole has everything you would need. The two main selling points of the Palma is having a very functional e-reader and a very portable form factor. But again, I think my phone fulfills this need even better when I'm traveling out and about. I just don't see myself carrying this Palma with me when I'm in the line at the grocery store or going out for a quick drive somewhere. I just don't think I would carry around a second device at the same size of my phone. If I really wanna read comfortably, I have no problem pulling out a Kindle or a larger size e-reader from my backpack. Or if I'm at home, I would want something more comfortable as well. This device is a very specific size and use case that I just don't think I'd ever need. I guess the only time I really found this to be useful was at that party when I looked like I was on my phone, but I had a more comfortable e-reader to read on. So I guess that was one benefit for it. If you found this video useful, you're probably also going to enjoy this other review that I did for something called the Pocket Pook Verse Pro, another Kindle competitor, which also has some unique features to it. Link for that video on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.